Good evening. Now, here's someone else to say good evening. I'm sorry about that. Uh, what I should have said was, here is somebody who's going to try and uh, say good, e good evening. Uh, however, he'll be appearing uh, later on in the programme uh, with a second try at saying good evening. By the way, I've suddenly realised, if you've just switched on, uh, what I'm saying must make absolute rubbish to you. So, uh, what I'll do is, I'll, I'll recap. Yes, well, I uh, hope she's satisfied. Satisfied, right? <laughs> the second time tonight. Anyhow, what I... <laughs> What, what happened was this, you see. I said, here is a man who's going to say good evening. But he said... Hello, Lord Louis Mountbatten! <laughs> <laughs> now, that's completely puzzled me. Because the first time I announced him, he said... <laughs> and the second time I said he's going to say good evening, he said... Hello, Lord Louis Mountbatten! <laughs> way! Way! Well, he's wrong with a man saying hello to Lord Louis Mountbatten. <laughs> that man I'm serving with me in the Navy. <laughs> Hello, sailor. <laughs> How did you do that? <laughs> By the way, have you ever done this without an aphrodisiac? <laughs> Maria, I've just met a man called Maria, <laughs> and suddenly that name. <laughs> and downwind tune. <laughs> and on the whole, I'd rather be in Philadelphia. With petrol, the price today is the only way to travel. <laughs> visited the septic river tribes in New Guinea <laughs> and in Melanesia the Aku Aku Islanders and their mysterious belief in Thor Heyerdahl, the god of sinking rafts. <laughs> this week we visited a lost white tribe on whom no human eye has ever set foot. <laughs> mysterious, strange and remote. They for instance believe that if you post a message in the mouth of this iron god, a horned uniformed devil will come, rip open the stomach, take out the message, and lose it forever. <laughs> Therefore, there is no written language. However, they communicate with this strange wooden box on which they pound out incessant rhythms. Good evening, here is the nine o'clock news. In London, they speak a strange patois. They, for instance, call these the apples and the pears. <laughs> the apples and the pears. And they believe if you ascend these apples and pears, you come to a room where a White goddess awaits you. He strips away his drab exterior plumage to reveal a surprisingly delicate underlayer. <laughs> to rouse the female further, he dons what are called wincy et pyjamas. <laughs> now, by drawing his fingernails across his body, he induces a pre-sexual trance. <laughs> now, the ceremonial vessel called 
the Kazanda is taken out and purified for the night. These are powerful tribal totems. The sex gather here in large numbers, especially in the mornings and the evenings. At these hours, the tribes become visibly agitated, rushing in all directions with seemingly no purpose in life. They are trying to catch one of these, huge red landlocked monsters which roam the concrete jungle. They only appear very rarely. <laughs> and when they do, for protection, they appear in lines of up to 20. <laughs> Members of the tribe vie with each other to try and catch one. The monsters are tended by a black tribe from another land called pa ki star -nees, who charge to the crowd, no standing on top, pass along the bus, please, and there's another one behind. We leave the forest and travel overland until we came to a great septic river. We cross into a great coin-operated valley where the natives seek their food. <laughs> Can you ask the hunter what he is doing? Certainly, I'll, I'll try. Here, Eric, this is going to kill you. Go on, tell us, I can't wait. This geezer here wants to know what you're doing. Well, I'm frying bleeding fish, aren't I? He says he's frying bleeding fish. <laughs> frying bleeding fish. You can tell him it's a right bloody job and all because shop the apes coming here half boats after this asking for a piece of rock, two of skate and six pounds of chips and give you a 20 quid note to pay for it. Makes me bloody spit! <laughs> he says the gods are angry. <laughs> the hunt oh, hunter! <laughs> the hunter has caught a tortoise in the boiling rock pool and has placed it on a piece of matting that the natives believe come from the sun. <laughs> this is the day of the sun when the males of the tribe pay homage to the family god, which is revered and worshipped above all else. <laughs> Hello! Mo Toka. Motor car, yes. 3.4 litre drag. Twin overhead camshaft. This is a member and of a the AA tribe. <laughs> they were hooked down on by the great RAC tribe who live in another world. Snip <laughs> 380 quid. What? These are the famous disappearing holes. <laughs> People go down here and are never seen again. <laughs> With the aid of a tribal elder, we decided to investigate. Pardon me, tribal elder. I was going to get the thing done here. You are now famous on television. Oh, yeah, of course, I well remember when I was just a little nipper, they told us a story about another tribe called the Mix. Mix. Now then, now they came from far across the sea, and they brought all this here clubber with them. How did this clobber come about? And why does it strike terror into the hearts of all men who see it? <laughs> this delicately woven piece of paper is etched Mad Brooks Mill Reef Two Dash Stroke Each Way. <laughs> What is that mysterious reef? Is it the one that Thor Herdal founded upon when, with a raft made of Guinness bottles and potatoes, he set out to prove that St. Patrick discovered Golders Green? These and other things are still unanswered. This is the commuter tribe. So much do they fear the light of day that they seek refuge in these ancient dark tunnels. And they rush forward blindly, seeking safety in great iron boxes into which they are crushed and sealed, and then driven off 
to distant places like Chipping Sodbury, <laughs> Lewisham, New Hill, Barnet East, Catford. The Cockneys build these delicate wayside shrines, <laughs> and such is their reverence for them that they keep the insides spotlessly clean. <laughs> Particularly moving is the sacrifice by the Cockanese of the iron bedstead, the cram, and the bicycle frame to the ever hungry gods of the village pod. <laughs> this is a temple that no woman can enter. <laughs> this is Bert Terrible, a handmaiden of the temple. He worships the sacred pools called Little Woods. <laughs> the Cockanese come here and seek relief in these cells of meditation. Let us listen to them at their devotions. song of their great water god. A fitting ending to these people called the Kokanis. <laughs> now, what will happen to these people when civilization catches oh, up with them? Get out of the kid! Get out of the kid! Why will you? Oh, ah! Oh, ah! <laughs> If an injured cricketer can have a runner, why can't a newsreader have an emotional cartoon? Good evening. Here is the nine o'clock news. Get on time! Not like your bloody British Railways, late, late, late. <laughs> We're usually only on time here because we sleep here, that's why. Today, <laughs> today the Queen <laughs> held a garden party which was attended by nearly a thousand people. Yeah, but not me. Not Corbett Woolall, no. All those silly old puffy tarts who, who with the feathers on those puffy guards off us. <laughs> but not Butch Corbett Woodall, no. Look here, I flew fairy swordfishes during the war. It was worth the night just to get into one of those things. No. The Queen, the least you could do for me is to give me the O. Or the Mum. Or the Luck. Or the Luck. Last night, two young climbers were trapped by the Urals. I beg your pardon, that should have read, trapped in the Urals. <laughs> all, all make mistakes, shan't we? It's my, one of we don't make more mistakes reading this rotty rubbish day after day. You try saying disestablishment parliamentarism after three hours in the bar with Billy Cotton Jr. But you try saying Billy Cotton Jr. after three hours in the bar with disestablishment parliamentarism. No, no, no. You'll no, no, no. <laughs> no, 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 all day long. The child's head caught in Balham railings, crippled Jewish figure caught in lift. Uh, I broke my leg falling off a ladder this morning. Nothing in the news about that. Corbett Woodall broke his leg today. Nothing about that, no. Look, the blood's congealing and me suck. <laughs> Hurry up, they close today, the <laughs> Today, the National Union of Topless Dancers called a nationwide strike. <laughs> Their spokesman, Miss Tanya Armitage, said, it's like this, two out, all out. <laughs> Have you seen him? United we stand, divided we fall. <laughs> In Parliament today, replying to Mrs Thatcher, the Prime Minister said, there are far too many knockers in Britain. <laughs> Your next news will be at 11 o'clock. By then I'll be stoned out of my mind! <laughs> and so, good night. And a <laughs> lot By Jove, I enjoyed that swim, Jim. So did I, Eric. Yeah, but it's not real water, you know. No, no. It's only a piece of paper with the water painted on it. That's why we're not wet. Of course. But as we're dry, why don't we do a sketch on land together? Spiffing idea. Good. Let's do it over here. We'll be marked for the rehearsal or something. Ah, <laughs> oh, yes. Ah, oh, yes. Right. Knock, knock, knock on the invisible door. Come, come, coming along the invisible hall. Walk, walk, walk. Click, squeak, crunch. Open. Hello. We have reached to believe that you are a man standing in an invisible hall. Yes, but he's out. Can I help you? Yes. We are... Jehovah burglars. But I'm not Jewish. I'll come to that later. You see, me and my friend here are being persecuted for our beliefs by the police. What are your beliefs? We believe you've got a lot of good silverware and stuff like that there. 
Good heavens, that's absolutely true. We only believe in the absolutely true. Uh, what are you doing? You! But uh, why are you removing that very valuable silverware? It should be kept in a safe, and it's mine. We are but disbeliever here, brother. We must convert him. Kneel down and say after me, Oh, my bleeding head! <laughs> oh, my bleeding head! <laughs> Here come the ground! <laughs> Sergeant! There has been a distinct thud on the head at 365 Hagley Road, Birmingham. This is a job for the police! <laughs> <laughs> Playing, oh, it's so. Pardon me, sir. We have reason to believe that a lump on the head has been committed to disaddress. Well, well, well. Heel fang, heel. Heel fang, he says. I'm sorry, sir. I shall have to arrest your wrists with handcuffs. In connection with what? With the rest of your arms. <laughs> you can't arrest me. I'm a distant cousin of the Queen. This puts me in a very difficult position. <laughs> <laughs> Let him acquit until he's straight. He'll fang. He'll fang his sir. Sergeant, I think I can hear someone coming down the stairs. Quick, let's run out of shot. Where's that to pray? This could mean promotion for you. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, burglar. My wife thought she heard policemen down the stairs. <laughs> 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 Escape, eh? I arrest you for being Houdini and while I'm here, give me a kiss. <laughs> Let me explain the mystery to you. Yes. You see, the reason why these handcuffs fall off my wrist is yes. because I am thin through malnutrition brought on by VAT. This man needs a fat-free diet. <laughs> we must hurry. That joke didn't get a laugh. <laughs> we must get this man to a criminal wrist fattening restaurant as soon as possible. Otherwise, he may die. Then the charge would be bum, 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 murder. <laughs> I'm always dreaming of you No matter what I do I can't forget you Sometimes I wish That I had never He'll fang He'll fang his finger <laughs> I say, I say, waiter, do you serve wrist fattening foods here? Yes, sir, sit down. We serve anybody. <laughs> I say, I say, what's this fly doing in my soap? That was no lady, that was my wife. <laughs> <laughs> waiter, waiter, why did the chicken cross the room? Because no power on earth can bring it down. <laughs> waiter, waiter, why's my dog got no news? to get to the other side. <laughs> now, any particular wine? Oh, uh, yes, uh, any particular wine. <laughs> Listen, it's time for the cabaret. Ow! And now, uh, testing, testing, testing. Hello, hello. <clears throat> the Riviera Catford is proud to present for Marion Kong the cabaret sensation of the year 1929, Miss World. And here he is, China's very own Grump tea thing. Oh, okay, not a person. Take away. Oh, oh. 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 Oh, I said, serve you very like for making some money. Ha <laughs> <laughs> ha! Oh, well, can't go on. I know. For my first trick, is the thin criminal in audience? This could be my lucky night. Lucky night, big hand for lucky night. Ha 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 ha! I'm not really a grotty thing. I'm really a police. And I've trapped this thin wrist criminal in his lair. Don't come out, because I'm coming in. <laughs> Right. 
Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> I have been in many police sketches in my time, <laughs> and this has been one of them. <laughs> Evening all. <laughs> and now it's time to play Where Does It Hurt? And here is your master of ceremonies, Oily Grin. <laughs> Gentlemen, thank you, thank you. I mean that most sincerely. I really do. <laughs> Tonight, folks, we're going to play Where Does It Hurt? A game where we here in the studio draw attention to all those wonderful sporting contestants who are in pain and suffering. Now, the way we play Where Does It Hurt is this. If you can think of any aspect of human agony that will bring this game alive, just write it on a postcard and send it to us, care of Where Does It Hurt? Remember this. One person's suffering can bring a great deal of pleasure to others. <laughs> sincerely, I really do. I mean that most sincerely. All right, here we go. Now I'd like you to meet our wonderful hostesses. Here they are. Victoria Sylvester. And Plata de Jour. A big hand for these two wonderful girls. And you certainly need a big hand for these two wonderful girls. <laughs> All right. Now, ladies and gentlemen. All right. Here we are. I'd just like to describe to you the way we play. Where does it hurt? Don't forget, every contestant that comes on this program is going through some sort of physical discomfort. Now, over here, ladies and gentlemen, we have the painometer. Now, this painometer will register your applause and laughter at what the contestants are suffering in order that they may entertain you. Isn't that wonderful? It really is. All right, here we go. <laughs> Victoria, who is the first contestant who wants to play? Where does it hurt? I don't know. How about that, ladies and gentlemen? An anonymous contestant. Isn't that wonderful? It really is. All right, so here he is. The unknown gentleman of breeding from Dick Crescent, Chiswick W4, famed for its flyover. <laughs> and he has... Abscess on the jaw. Abscess on jaw. All right, three wonderful hours from the unknown gentleman of breeding from Chiswick W4, scoring 68 wonderful painometer points with. Abscess on jaw. And don't forget, abscess makes the heart grow fonder. <laughs> All, right. All right, don't forget, ladies and gentlemen, it is your appreciation of a good pain that will bring our contestants through to the finals or to the grave. All right? Now, what? Our next contestant is Miss Zalvira Motz from 23 Terrible Street, Luton. And she's going to give us a cute lumbago. And I bet that's not all that's cute about her. <laughs> oh, Bert! Ow! Ow! Come on, this could be an holiday in the side of France for us. Get <laughs> Seventy-five wonderful points. Near agony to Mrs. Motts with cute lumbago. Thank you, thank you. This stage, ladies and gentlemen, I just want to point out that this contest is still wide open. So don't forget, folks, if you've got a friend or a relative that's going through any sort of physical discomfort, either at home or at Harrods, <laughs> don't waste it. That pain can be turned into hard cash right here on Where Does It Hurt? So keep those postcards coming in. I mean that most sincerely, I really do. And I mean that most sincerely, I really do. And I mean that most sincerely, I'm... And I'm... <laughs> All right, Victoria. There. Oh, yes. Oh, it's Mr. Ian McTomgin of 309A Scrackers Road, flat 7B, bed 29, upper bunk, Virginia Water. 
How about that, ladies and gentlemen? This is a novelty contestant. Now, this contestant, let me explain to you, he's got nothing wrong with him. But being the sort of gentleman that he is, sporting gentleman, I mean, he's come right here into the studio to introduce his own paint. So here he is, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Virginia Water with own paint. Now, the other side. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful, that really was. 99 wonderful paint on the points for Mr. Virginia McTomjam. But don't forget, ladies and gentlemen, still in the lead is that wonderful contestant of last week, Mr. Patrick O'Murphy from Ireland. <laughs> and he scored 100 points, ladies and gentlemen, with this. Act. Okay, Huey, I'm going for the big one. Extreme <laughs> agony. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Mick, drop it! <laughs> thank you, thank you. So here he is, ladies and gentlemen, a warm welcome to the all-time winner. Here he is, Patrick O'Murphy! <laughs> And finally, this month's £75,000 premium bomb winner is Z34911-X, and he lives in Middlesex. <laughs> <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.